the bride in waiting for the eternal celestial bridegroom, Jesus Christ. A paschal hymn says, O women, be the heralds of good news and tell what you saw. Tell of the vision and say to, to Zion, accept the good news of joy from us, the news that Christ has risen, exalt and celebrate and rejoice, O Jerusalem, seeing Christ the King coming from the tomb like a bridegroom. Now, as things in this world are cranking up to the fear factor level with wars and rumors of wars, it's a substance of peace and a constant expectation of hope to dwell upon that great and marvelous day when our Messiah returns for his bride the second time. May each of us be counted worthy. And uh, the bridegroom, of course, one of the parables we have is the ten virgins, the five that were of course, ready for the bridegroom, and the other five that were not. So each of us may each of us be counted worthy. May we all be clothed in the wedding garments. May we each awaken when the call goes out. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go out to meet him. May our lamps be filled with oil, trimmed and burning bright. And finally, may we know when to enter at the door before it closes. May this be our perpetual prayer. We will open this most momentous subject with an introduction from the teacher, as recorded by uh, someone, the bride in waiting. Behold the kala. The kala is the Jewish word, the Hebrew word for, uh, it, it sounds very much like the Greek word kali, meaning beautiful. And that's the uh, term used for the bride. Behold the kala, said the teacher, as he drew my attention to a young woman in the tent village. It's how you say bride in Hebrew. Do you remember when the bridegroom, bridegroom made his visit? It was for her, his beloved. And yet she's still here, I said. She's the bride, but not yet married. In the Hebrew wedding, the bridegroom journeys to the house of the bride. There in that house or tent, the covenant is made. They are from that moment on considered bride and groom, husband and wife. But the bridegroom must then leave the bride and her house and journey back to where he came from. The two are joined in the covenant of marriage. But they don't see each other until the, next, until the day of the wedding. They spend their time preparing for that day. But for the bride, it seems as if nothing's changed. She still lives with her family in that tent. She's still doing her daily chores. Her surroundings are the same. Her life is the same. She's married, but what's changed? She has changed, he said. She is now the Kalah, the bride. I don't understand. Two thousand years ago, the bridegroom journeyed to the house of the bride. Our Messiah journeyed to this world, to our house, into our lives. And likewise, a purpose was to make a covenant. According to the mystery, the bridegroom must leave the bride's house and return home. So Messiah then left this world to return to his heavenly home. So these now are the days of the separation. The groom in his house in heaven, and we as the bride are in our house, this world. And if you said yes to the bridegroom's covenant, you are as she is. You're still in the same tent, this present world, but you are waiting. Things around you may look the same and feel the same, your life, your circumstances may look unchanged, but something very big has changed, and that is you. It's not the tent that has changed, but your world, but you. And so you are no longer of the world. You're in the world, but no longer of the world. You no longer belong to your circumstances, nor to your past, nor to your sins and limitation. No longer are you bound to these things. You don't belong to the world, you belong to the bridegroom. You're free from this world because you are the beloved and chosen Kalach, the bride of Yeshua Mashiach, the Jesus Christ. This is from the Book of Mysteries, Bride in the Tent by Jonathan Kahn, page 93. The Bridal Covenant. It's still true that 2,000 years ago, the long-promised Messiah by his Hebrew name Yeshua HaMashiach made his way to earth the house of his bride. 
while here he, dis he displayed his eternal love for his beloved in that he laid down his life for her on Passover, the 14th day counter from his original and authentic full new moon. All are invited to enter into the covenant as the adored and beloved bride, but alas, only a handful, yes, to his covenant agreed and will be sealed and then spend their time set apart in waiting, preparing themselves for that great day. Revelation 7, 1 to 4, but nonetheless, Revelation 7, 9 to 10, identifies an additional great multitude who are saved that evidently come to a knowledge of the truth in the last moments before judgment and or include the many generations that are deceased who had died in the blessed hope. Either way, many from all corners of the earth will be saved on that great day, but no further details are given as to who makes up the great multitude. So what is his covenant agreement? It's recorded in both Yeshua, Isaiah, and Revelation as two succinct witnesses testifying to the sacred standard of the covenant. Quote, Isaiah, or Yeshua, H20, Isaiah, of course, means Yeshua, to the Torah law and his testimony, prophetic time-centered feast day assemblies of the Messiah's work unto salvation, if they do not speak according to this word, it's because there is no light or truth in them. And in Revelation 14, 12, Here is the peace of the righteous, Zadok. Here are they who keep the Torah law and have the testimony of Yeshua, prophetic time-centered feast day, assemblies of the Messiah's work unto salvation. Notice in each example there are two criteria that complete the covenant standard. One is the law, and the two is the testimony of faith in the uh, Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Torah, the Old Testament, the story of the coming of the Messiah and his testimony was born out in the sanctuary temple ceremony rehearsal services. These outline his ministerial work of salvation for mankind in detail throughout the period from spring to fall each year. In the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, this very same covenant testimony begins to be fulfilled in the life and death of the long-promised Messiah. He came to accomplish the time-centered order, order uh, in time-centered centric order, the events as presented in the Torah law of the Old Testament, the sanctuary temple ceremonial rehearsal service, which are signified by the lunar appointed feast days. While the swap was made, his life in place of ours, the remainder of the process as beacon by the feast days will continue to be fulfilled until they are completed in real time at his return. In modern translations of scripture, the term Torah law has been removed apparently by the Romans and has been replaced by the term law or commandments. While this is still correct, it is a dumbing down of truth, hiding of facts that is one or half of the bride cut by bridal covenant unto salvation. These alterations have led the whole church denominations to believe this means we are only to keep the Ten Commandments, allowing them to disregard the binding claims of the first five books recorded by Moses, which is called the Torah Law, which is sacred calendar and lunar appointed times. And stunningly, the term commandments means more than just the Ten Commandments, but all the ones that you have heard from the beginning. The commandments that you've heard from the beginning. Strikingly, the New Testament verse from 2 John 1 6 identifies the commandments in question as, quote, the ones we have heard from the beginning to walk in, end quote. Astonishingly, this includes much more than just the Ten Commandments. And this is love that we walk after his commandments, and the co that is the this is the commandment that you have heard from the beginning that you should walk in it, 2 John 1, 6. So what are the commandments that we have heard from the beginning that we should walk on them, in them? Quote, but as for you, stand here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and statutes and the judgments 
which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give to them, to possess it. You shall observe to do, therefore, as Yahweh your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in the ways of Yahweh your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. This is in Deuteronomy 5, 31 to 33. And that I command you this day to love Yahweh your God, to walk in his ways and keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. Yahweh your God shall bless you in the land whither you go to possess it. Deuteronomy 30, 16. And keep the charge of Yahweh your God to his walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, his testimonies, and it is written in the Torah law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do, and with whithersoever you turn yourself. 1 Kings 2 3. And it shall be if you will hearken unto all that I command you, and will walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did that I will be with you and build you a sure house as I built for David and I will give Israel to you. 1 Kings 11.38 But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk you in all ways, all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Jeremiah 7.23 here, at the very end of the time, the scenario, the same scenario is presented. We find his covenant is complete only as a full list of commandments we heard from the beginning includes his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies. It's this full set of four from the Torah law that will be presented in, present in those who receive the seal of God, as we find in Revelation 14.12. Here is the patience of the saints, the peace of the righteous, that is. Here are those who keep the commandments of God, the Torah law of God, Yahweh, and have faith, the faith of Jesus, testimony of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. Pass over the sign and seal of Yahweh. Stunningly, the common denominator for both of these verses in Isaiah and Revelation is the Feast of Passover. So is it possible that Passover is a seal of Yahweh God and the covering and the covering to protect his elect from receiving the mark of the beast? What does scripture have to say about Passover? It, Passover, shall be as a sign to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes, your forehead, that Yahweh Torah's law may be in your mouth, and for with a strong hand Yahweh has brought you out of Egypt, the New World Order. With its mark of the beast, you shall therefore keep this ordinance, Passover, in its season, lunar appointed time. Now, uh, this is on Exodus 13, 9, 10. Now, I have to tell you that the only church, the only Christian church, which is the original way to keep the, the Passover, the Pesach, the, uh, uh, the uh, resurrection and uh, pas the, pas the passion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Christian Orthodox Church because we go with the lunar calendar of the uh, Hebrews. And let's remember that it's written in the apostolic teachings, the the, the he, which was what Jesus Christ taught his uh, disciples and his uh, apostles, the 40 days between his resurrection and his assumption, how, to, how the church should follow the uh, Easter especially. It's as if he, always, he knew that there would be Christian churches that would not keep the proper date. And, and he said, you must always have it the first su Sunday after the Hebrew Passover. He says, even if the Hebrews get it wrong, you still have to follow the Hebrew Passover. He explained this very clearly. He said, if you don't, it's as if I will be getting crucified more times. That was the, that's what exactly what he said. Now, going back to this, it's in finding and keeping Kadosh, the holy, sacred, undefiled, the authentic Passover feast day of scripture that identifies the faithful and obedient followers of 
uh, Yahweh God. And these alone are in every respect honoring the covenant of the bridegroom. To get it right requires physical action signaled by the hand and the mental decision to, as described by the remembrance or the memorial between the eyes. Profoundly, Passover was or ordained by the Most High Yahweh God to be the sign and seal of his obedient and faithful followers throughout history. Okay, there are many times that we have the Catholic and the Protestant Easter, unfortunately, before the, the, the Pesach, before the Passover of the Hebrews. Can you imagine? I mean, that's ridiculous. Anyway, going back to this, Passover occurs upon the fixed lunar day each year, counting 14 days from the first full moon in spring that arises at, at, at nearest the feet of the constellation Virgo. In locating the authentic Passover, one must count from the original full moon as a new moon, and in doing so, it's discovered that the true seventh day Sabbath, in fact, lunar, just is the very place in scripture where the Passover 14th is mentioned. The seven day Sabbath is always the next day on the 15th of lunar month. By extension, Isaiah 66 23 reveals that from one new moon to another, the authentic seven-day Sabbath is found upon the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th of every lunar month since creation. This year, Passover uh, is to occur April 4th, uh, sorry, uh, April 30th, 2020 of the Roman solar calendar. And the bride is waiting. Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ, was about to leave his disciples and faithful bride, bridal followers and returned to his father's house, he declared a most comforting promise of his return in John 14, 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in Yahweh God and in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. That's the word of the bridegroom. Our, our eternal home with the bridegroom is not here, it's there. So for these past 2,000 years, we've all been living the time of the separation as the bride in waiting, we the church, as we remain faithful to his kingdom and wedding covenant, the Torah law, the testimonies of um, Jesus. We remain his ordered, adored, beloved bride, and betrothed princess bride of his eternal kingdom in a, uh, his eternal kingdom government. If we have been ignoring either the Torah law or the testimony of uh, Jesus as born out in his sacred lunar appointed feast days, we have not been abiding by his bridal covenant and must take this time to turn it all around. The return of the bridegroom Proverbs 7, 19, 20 puts it this way. Uh, For my husband is not at home. He is not, he's gone on a long journey. He took a bag of money with him to purchase your eternal home. And the full moon he will come home. Proverbs 7, 19 to 20. So uh, we are waiting. Our waiting is nearly over. And our bridegroom is soon to return for his faithful and obedient covenant bride. The bride's focus is to make herself ready, washing her robes, her wedding gar garments, and making them white in the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 7.14. So while he will return for his bride, it will be the full moon of the seventh lunar month. In the fall, at the termination of the prophetic, 1,260 days, his return will be synchronized to his sacred and set-apart lunar appointed feasts. Jeremiah 2.32, can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten my days without number. I will greatly rejoice in uh, Jesus. My soul shall be joyful in my Elohim, for he has, my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Isaiah 61.10 Joel 2.16 Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes, 
let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Jeremiah 7.34 Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. Revelation 19.9 And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of Yahweh God. And this is from the Creator's Calendar. I'll leave a link below for you for this. And may we all be in that waiting area with the uh, virgins that are, are uh, ready for their bridegroom, the eternal celestial bridegroom, our beloved Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.